Hello, welcome to my video series, The Heroine's Journey. I'm Susanna Liller, and it's time to find your happiness. Today, I'm going to share an exercise with you. It's an exercise that really started my business for women, my empowerment business for women, way back in 2000, though I learned how to do this before then. And it's really the core of what I've been teaching all that time. It's the core of my course, my online course, um, Your Journey of Transformation. I've also included it in my book, so you can find it in there in chapter eight. I've put it everywhere because it's really useful for navigating your way through life. And today I wanna go through it with you. And of course, if you want more information, more detail about it, I actually do one-on-one -on -one coaching using this particular exercise. So we're gonna get started. And let me just give you a little background. And what I call it is intuitive visioning. So it started when I was working in corporate organizations with nonprofits, helping them do strategic planning. And in those days, I didn't call it intuitive visioning. I called it strategic planning. And I learned the technique from a group that came and consulted with the company that I was in um, during the quality movement and used it as a way to identify problems in the corporation. And so I began using it for that, but then I began to see that there were a lot of different ways you could use it. You could use it by asking it. It always starts with a question. The question is kind of what drives how it unfolds. And so you could use it with the question, what are all the problems in the organization? You could use it with the question, what are all the questions we need to be asking? But what I zeroed in on and then what I've been using ever since is using it for where do we see ourselves in three years and again first I started doing that with groups and so the way that that would go was I'd get a group of people together I'd give them the supplies that I'm going to be sharing with you soon what what those are and then we'd start with the question given ideal circumstances what will my fill in the blank, whatever the business was, Acme, railroad ties, what will my business look like, be like, what will we be doing in, and then we counted out three years. And what people would do, each individually, they'd start writing their responses to that question. And I would give them a certain amount of stickies, as in 3M stickies. These are small ones because you'll see why in a minute. And they would write their responses and then I'd ask them to share those responses with the group. And it was always with the ground rule, no judging, no critiquing of anybody's idea. We just need to make sure we understand that person's idea. And when I did it with a large group, I would put a big white sheet of paper up on the wall and they would take their stickies and put them up and explain them, no judging by anybody else. And then I'd ask them to go up and put those ideas into groups, organize them into common categories with common themes. So they would get up there and move the stickies around. I had told them beforehand, make sure it's just one idea per sticky and go ahead and put them into common groups. So they would do that and they'd look at it and talk about it. And we'd always ask, is anything missing? Because when you kind of see it up there, it can be evident that, oh no, we forgot. And then they'd add some more stickies, which is fine. But then eventually they'd get settled in on, okay, these are the categories. And at that point, I would say, then let's look at these. 
there's a lot here. You're already doing a lot as an organization. What are the top three, if you could only do and focus on and put work into three categories, which ones would you focus on? And to help them with that, I would give them dots. I would give them a red dot, a blue dot, and a green dot. And I would say, give one to each person. And then I would say, put the red dot on if you could only do one category. Put these dots on the titles of each of those groups. I had asked them to one or two word titles of what the category would be called. And then put the red dot on the category title that if I only could do one thing, all of us together, which one? The blue would be second most important thing if I could only do two and then the green third most important thing. And then we'd sit down and look at it. And sometimes that shifted. Some people would say, you know, we really need to do this before that. At any rate, they would arrive at their categories. And then the next step to implement it would be to put together an action plan to make those categories a reality. Sometimes the group would say, okay, so I get, Susanna, that focusing on these three things is our vision of the future for the next three years, but sometimes they wanted to get the umbrella statement, whatever the umbrella synthesizing statement was for those three particular categories. And that would be the vision statement. And sometimes they spend a lot of time coming up with, with that statement. I always felt that if you know you're going to focus in these three areas, I called it, what are you going to put on your plate over the next three years? These three categories, this is your focus. And if something else comes along, fine, but Look at what's already on your plate for your areas of focus. And maybe you're gonna to have to take something off if this new thing, if you wanna supplant it. So a way of looking at what you want in the future and organizing it and making sure you implement it and, and staying focused because always, particularly in business, always, the pull of gravity is back to the fire of the moment and what you had been doing. So a lot of times a strategic plan is helping you change the direction. And so staying focused is so important. But what I was astounded by was that when these groups came up with their vision, their categories of focus and put together an action plan for each of those categories of focus when they all pulled together in the same direction, it would happen. It would happen even before the three years was up. I remember being in the kitchen of a nonprofit board. They didn't have a building yet. They were meeting in their director's kitchen and we did it on the walls of the kitchen. Everybody had their stickies, put them up. One of the things that they came up with is, was a state of the art writing arena because this was a group that helped people use horses to work with their psychological state and, and thera it was therapeutic writing. And when they said that state of the art writing arena, because that question, we'll talk about it a little more in a minute, but it, it in, invites you to do blue sky thinking at the onset. Don't hold back. What would be the best thing? That's why given ideal circumstances is why the question starts in that way. So given ideal circumstances means you don't let the critic come in. You don't let anything limit you. Money, just start out by what would be the best. And then eventually, as the group talks about it, as you get to the more grounded action planning, you have to kick some ideas out. But this one, state-of-the-art writing arena, stayed. It was in their category of focus, one of them, and they wanted it to happen. And I remember thinking, this is, this is a reach. 
they did it. They absolutely did it. And I have seen that with libraries thinking that they were going to bring in a large amount of money doing it. So many different organizations. Again, it gets the ideas in your mind pulling together with all the other people in the group. You share those ideas and then you all agree on your direction and you're all pulling in the same direction and it happens. So I was doing that kind of work and then it occurred to me that people should do this. Why should it just be a corporation or a nonprofit board that spends a day, or usually it was a day, doing a strategic plan because they feel it's important to look at their business and where they want to go down the road? Yes, it's very important. Why wouldn't a person do it? If it works for them, could it work with individuals? So I tested it on a few friends and they really liked it. They had fun doing it. And then I actually did a workshop for a conference in Portland, Maine, where I'm from, and that was successful. And suffice it to say, I've been doing it with individuals ever since. And I'd like to show you how to do it and, and invite you to do the same thing. Now, when I do this with people in a workshop setting or one-on-one, -on -one, I set the stage for it. And the way I set the stage is that we need to ask your brain, your very active left brain that's always got the answers, that's very practical, that could be saying, I don't need to do this. I know exactly what my three-year plan is. I have to get my finances in order. I need to lose weight. I need to so we don't want to jump in all four feet with that overly active, I know what we should be doing brain. I call this intuitive visioning because I invite your intuition to have a say. And rest assured that, again, as we get to the part where you're putting together what exactly am I going to do, we can invite your logical left brain in to tell us whatever we, we need to know. But at the beginning, particularly because we also start with that same question, given ideal circumstances, ideal circumstances, what will my life look like, be like, what will I be doing three years from now? So it's life, not my business, but it's still don't limit me at the onset. Don't come up with an idea and say, oh, I could never afford that. Or I, that's so impractical or he'll, whatever. We don't want that. We want given ideal circumstances. And then we're going to see what comes up. So I set the stage. I explain about the question, just like I did. And then we actually do things that are conducive to encouraging your intuition. So I have people sometimes have fun and we would color, we would write with our non-dominant hand, we would I remember a particular group where we had relay races and would go and sit on balloons and we got people laughing. Um, we had other quick fire, I called it the quick fire exercise where you had to just list within a certain time frame all the things you want to do before you die. And magazine tearing out, ripping out images and pictures that appealed to you all things that, again, I call circumventing the brain, a way to, oh, there's this playful side of me. What does the playful side have to say? So whatever would do that for you, setting the stage before you begin, before you ask the question for this other part of you to emerge. Intuition, you could call it your creative inner child. Um, 
your imagination. We want to, we want the invite the whole part of you, all of you, the whole part, all of you to be in this exercise. Set the stage, have people relax, have you relax, have some tea at the ready and find a piece of paper, a white sheet of paper. Now mine is pretty big, but it doesn't have to be this big. But what you're gonna be doing is putting stickies on it. So if you have eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, maybe you need two of those taped together. And my stickies are little, but you can find bigger ones. You can do what I, did take a, get a big easel page and put that on the wall and do it on the wall. Whatever works for you, but you're gonna be writing on whatever size sticky you get. Now, even before you ask yourself the question and you start writing stickies, there are some rules for how you write the stickies. You write only one idea per sticky. So if the question, the question is, given ideal circumstances, what will my life look like, be like, what will I be doing in 2025? Then I, what comes up for me is I will be doing a running a marathon and build and growing a garden in my backyard. So those are two ideas. So they have to be separated onto two stickies. So you have to watch out for that. And usually if the word and is in there, that might mean that there's more than one idea per sticky. Also, we word stickies as though it's already happening. I am growing a garden in my backyard. I am riding a, my bicycle in a triathlon. Um, use the present tense. Another thing is to know that all ideas are good ideas. So you have to ask your judge, your critic, to walk out the, of the room while you're doing this exercise. You don't want to be judging what you're putting on your sticky. All ideas are good ideas, and they're coming up from the depth of you. So you want to honor them. What comes up, you write down. Even if you think one woman wants high level managerial position, very busy in her job, a sticky was, I'm rollerblading. And she laughed, she thought it was hysterical. But she didn't get rid of it, she didn't judge it. Long story, she ended up realizing that that was, I need fun in my life. And following that pathway, more fun, changed her entire life. And it just happened because of that one rollerblading sticky. And there's been so many like that. Things like that have happened. And you will have surprises if you really allow yourself to let go of what the brain thinks you should be doing and just see what comes up. So one way to help you with this before, and let me just make sure I've told you all the thing about this. If you can be specific about the stickies, in other words, seeing it in your mind's eye, and this will help when you hear that what we do also right before you start writing is we imagine that you're out there three years from the present date. And you are in a place, maybe you're in the same place where you're actually doing the exercise and you have the opportunity to look around you. What are you wearing? What are you doing? Who's with you? How have things changed or remained the same? You're looking for details. You've transported yourself out through three years and wow, this, you have a swimming pool in the backyard next to the garden that you planted. And again, you're using your imagination. You're using what comes to you 
after you ask the question. So I actually have people close their eyes and actually think about it, imagine it, see themselves three years ahead in that exact date in that year. And then I have them think about how they're going to come and report back to me about what they saw and what was there and what was going on, because that's what they actually they're going to put on the stickies. So in that state, I have them begin. And I usually have them set a timer for a half an hour or 45 minutes, depends. It's a retreat. Companies go for a day. They take themselves to a resort and really get away. It's very important to get away from your regular life so you can be more objective as you think about it. You don't want interruptions. So however you want to work the time constraint, you're going to want to feel relaxed as far as writing as many stickies as you want to write once you're ready to do it. So you will have stickies, 3M stickies, again, whatever. You will have a pen. You will have water or tea or something at the ready. Can light a candle if that helps you put music on. But then ask the question, write it down. Given ideal circumstances, what will my life look like, be like? What will I be doing in on May 2nd, 2025? Or whatever the date is. And start. Just start writing. Honor everything that comes up. Don't dismiss anything. Don't judge. Just write. Get into the zone. What you'll have is you'll have a bunch of stickies on your board. These usually people, there's no prescribed anything. <laughs> You can have as many as you have, and there's no judge for how many you should have. So what I've got here, I have one that says, pay off my credit card, learn to tap dance, sign up for Pilates, attend the town meeting, cut back on sugar. You have a bunch of stickies. The next step, is to put them into categories, common categories, common threads of meaning. Which ones go together? People usually love to do this step. So I took my sign up for Pilates and cut back on sugar and put that in one. Um, learn to tap dance. So. I really, I didn't spend a lot of time doing this because I just wanted to show you and have it be illustrative for you. But what you do is once you put them into categories, you come up with one or two word titles. So I had a title over a 10 town meeting. I called it Get Involved. And then I had a title I like this one, fun, about learn to tap dance. I put a title, finances, pay off my credit card. I think I would, can tell you that almost everybody that's ever done this has had a finances category. And then one, I called it my health, sign up for Pilates and cut back on sugar. So that's the coming up with the sticky ideas, putting them into categories and putting them in titles, giving them titles. The next step is priorities. And this is what I was talking about. If you could only work with 
one of these categories, you are already so busy. So here you are doing your personal strategic plan, your intuitive visioning. What am I going to focus on? I'm already focused on so much. So maybe you can only do one of these categories. What would be most important if you could only do one? Well, no, for me right now, I think I want to learn to tap dance. <laughs> but you decide what are the top three things or two things. Sometimes people say, I want to do them all. I just want to make sure that people don't bite off so much and then they can't do it and then they get frustrated. So they will always be there. You can always, once you really get into one category, you can always then add in another. But you decide, usually I say, pick your top three. And once you do that, then I ask people to water their plan. So they could take it at that point and say, okay, this is what I'm about over the next three years. I'm going to work on finances, fun, and my health and put it up on the shelf. And that's it. And let me just say to you, I always tell people to water it and don't put it on the shelf. When companies and nonprofits spent all day or more on a retreat and then did that, put it on the shelf. That was the worst thing to spend all that time and all those good ideas and then get sucked back in with the pull of gravity to what they'd always been doing. That would, that would kill me as the facilitator. But I do want you to know, and I, I, this doesn't really, I don't think this ever happened with a company or a nonprofit, but when people do this, they do often put it on the shelf and forget about it. Here's the interesting, interesting thing is that at some point they find it and they've found it and they will call me and they will say, you won't believe it. That was what, five years ago, Susanna? Everything on here I've done. So you know how people will tell you, I'm one, you know, make a list of everything you want and then put it away and then go look at it three years or five years and you will see that so much of that list has been done. There's some something about your intention and writing it down. Actually, there's a book, write it down and make it happen. That sends energy there and does make it happen. However, I still think it's good to water your plan occasionally. And so what I would ask people to do is look at your category, the category that you choose. And for each of these, come up with a couple steps that take you closer to making that happen and write it down and check on it once a month and just see if you're moving towards it. So I get much more structured about this when I coach people to do this one-on-one. -on -one. But to just show you the process for doing this, which really isn't hard, it really is kind of fun. It is fun. And it's an excellent tool to help you be more proactive in your life and not just react to whatever comes down the pike. I always tell people that it's, if you decide to take this kind of an approach to set aside time that life is important enough for me to devote a day or a half a day to doing this and stating what I'm looking for and what I wanna create, it is important and your life is important. And it's like when you go to the grocery store, this is my sort of simple analogy, go to the grocery store and you make a list first so that when you're going up and down those aisles, you know what you're looking for and you can find it and put it in your cart. Not doing this, not taking the time to make a list or a personal strategic plan or a 
personal intuitive visioning plan is like randomly going through, oh, that looks good. Oh, that looks good. Throwing it in your cart. When you get to the checkout, you don't have half the things that you really need because you didn't think about it ahead of time. So your life is important. You have one wild and precious life. And this is a worthy exercise for you to try heroin. And I hope you will consider it. And if you need any extra help or tips with it, then please contact me. You can find me my website, SusannaLiller.com, or on Instagram, or I have a Real Life Heroines Network on Facebook. So I hope to see you again, and we'll talk about what your life looks like, your ideal life three years from now. Thank you for spending this time with me. I hope you learned something, and I look forward to sharing another exercise with you at our next visit and video.